can we compute the Laplace transform of any function f of t? In order to do so, we need an integral up to infinity to converge. This works if we have two things. First of all, we do not want vertical asymptotes. For this, we require piecewise continuity of f. And secondly, we want f to go to zero fast enough. And for this, we require exponential order. Note that these two conditions are sufficient. So if f satisfies these conditions, the Laplace transform exists. Whereas if f does not satisfy these conditions, the Laplace transform may or may not exist. However, most of the common functions satisfy these conditions, which means that their Laplace transform exists. So let's take a look at those conditions. So first of all, we want f to be piecewise continuous. And second of all, we want f of t to be of exponential order as t goes to infinity. So what does this mean? That means is f of t has to be smaller than some exponential function if t becomes large. So smaller than some e to the power a t times some large number m. So that means is that f can become really, really large. Uh, it only has to be below some exponential functions. Well, exponential functions are very large and f only has to be below an exponential function. So it's not such a bad condition. Many, many uh, functions satisfy those. So what does this piecewise continuity mean? Well, let's make a, uh, 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 a sketch to show it. So piecewise continuous function, it may jump a bit, so like this, make a small jump above, and then you're fine. And however, if you make large jumps, if you have like an asymptote, something like this, that's not fine, then you're not piecewise continu continuous anymore. Piecewise continuous, then you're continuous, except for a couple of points. And on those couple of points, you only may make a finite jump and not such a vertical asymptote. So that's the piecewise continuity. Now about the exponential order. That means that your f has to be below some exponential functions. Let's take a look at a few examples. For example, the function 1. Well, 1 is smaller or equal than 1 times e to the power 0 t for t positive. So that means you can pick your capital M equal to 1. You can pick your a equals 0. And this shows that for this capital M and this A, our uh, f of t uh, is below m e to the power a t, which means that f of t is of exponential order. Another example, f of t equals sine t. Well, that's even easier because the sine is below 1, and 1 was already of exponential order, so we can make the same estimate for the sine, and sine t is also of exponential order. Next example. 5 times e to the power minus 70. What about this one? Well, that's smaller or equal than 5 times e to the power minus 70. Okay, that's a bit silly to write it like this. But now your m is over here. You can pick your capital M equals 5. And you can your pick your a even minus 7. And you are fine. So all those functions are of exponential order. Are there any problems? Well, if you pick, for example, the tangent of t, Okay, it has problems with asymptotes, but it's also not of exponential order. Because whatever you do, at the, at the tangent of t ke keeps having those uh, um, uh, vertical asymptotes. So no matter what you do, how big you make your exponential function, at a certain point, uh, your uh, tangent will go through your exponential function. So this one is not of exponential order. You will not be able to get it below an exponent. And a bit more subtle, maybe, f of t equals e to the power t squared. Well, whatever you do, uh, at a certain point, your t squared will always be <coughs> bigger than a times t. No matter how big you pick your a, t squared will always win in the end. So you cannot get your t squared below a times t, which means that you cannot get your e to the power t squared below e to the power a times t. So this is also not of exponential order. But okay, we had to pick really nasty functions to be able to get something not of exponential order. So why is this sufficient? Well, we want to compute an integral like this in the end. You can split it into two parts, up to t and bigger than t. Now, 
up till t your piecewise is continuous so uh, a function is bounded and this integral is at, at most the maximum of, of f times t so that part is bounded and the second part works as well because you have an e to the power a minus s times t so uh, uh, if, uh, for, for a suitable choice of a uh, this uh, uh, integral converges as well so that is why these two conditions are sufficient the piecewise continuity ensures the convergence of the integral on the first part and the exponential order ensures the convergence of the integral on the second part up to infinity.